I'm really happy to have on this show a guest who is someone who's a very respected leader in our community. We have her on to ask her about some specific things that have been going on recently, but she's someone we've kind of wanted to have on for a long time. Um, welcome, Miriam Michelle, the Executive Director of Healthy Waltham. Hi, thank you, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, we're so super excited uh, to be a part of this, so thank you. As an FYI, people are watching this. Uh, there, I have a newborn, <laughs> so we do hear we we do hear little sounds coming from my chest. That's what I'm wearing a carrier right now. So I should have mentioned Chris is recusing himself from this interview because he used to work for Healthy Waltham. So that's why I'm asking. Oh, okay. Most people know about Healthy Waltham in town, but for those who don't, can you tell us first of all how did it start, and where is it now? What is it doing now? Healthy Waltham started around 2012, and it actually started um, during that move, the move campaign uh, that uh, Lady Obama um, was pertinent about, where obesity was really high in the uh, American society. And so, um, with the closing of the Waltham Hospital, um, Healthy Waltham got a grant to kind of start this work and start promoting this in the Waltham public school systems. So it was a grassroots organization with educators, nonprofit um, folks who just wanted to do better in their society through healthy options. And we have always believed that um, health, being healthy shouldn't be a privilege um, and we should remove access to barriers um, for that. So we started doing um, you know, nutrition education classes, physical ed. Um, we started doing learning gardens um, to kind of promote it, uh, nutrition at an early age and plethora of programs um, in and around the city through the senior centers, through, <laughs> like I said, the Waltham Public Schools. Um, and then I would say recently up into the food pantry uh, for a couple of years, right at McDevitt, um, Medevic Middle School. Uh, that program ran from September to June and it went so well that um, one of our staff members, Maria DiMaggio, thought we should do the same thing for seniors once a month. Um, and so we were always in the food relief, uh, we always did food relief programs at a smaller scale, um, helping out our community. And then the, the food relief became a bigger part of it at some point? Um, during the pandemic, obviously. Um, so given that, I remember um, I had started September of 2019 as, as the new executive director. Um, and so there was a couple of programs I wanted us to keep on doing and a couple that I wanted to um, no longer do. Uh, food relief, we knew it was just very important um, to the constituents in the school system that we were serving. Um, and so we decided that, yeah, that's a program we should continue. And so as soon as the pandemic hit, I wanted to assure that we could still continue that. And did not, like I said, did not expect it to be <laughs> this big and continue to still be doing it um, at this scale that we're doing it now. Can you say more about that, about how many people do you serve at a typical pantry? Yes, so I would say prior to the pandemic, between the two pantries, we were serving about 400 families a month. Um, and then we grew to serving a thousand families uh, bi-weekly. So we were now at um, serving every second and fourth and fifth Thursday of the month um depending on the month of the year and we just became a hub where we were serving and um and serving smaller entities and smaller areas of Waltham we, we, we our partnerships grew so there was shut-ins that we weren't able to reach and we partnered up with other organizations such as Waltham Mutual Aid to aid with that um a small church group so just it just became much bigger than we had anticipated, for sure. Uh, so are you still serving that many people? So we have, so now, you know, three years later, 
uh, we are not serving that much people. Um, one of the major partners we that kind of was like a sub um, a sub organization under us has now become its own pantry. We've pushed for them to become their own pantry. So they were they were the majority of the people that we were serving. Um, and these were Waltham residents. So she was specifically helping with the Haitian population here in Waltham. Um, and so now uh, Ministry of Truth has become their own pantry. And now I would say between all the partners, the other partners that we serve, we probably, probably between um, 350 to, to 600 families um, every couple of weeks. And um, yeah. So it's, 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 it's shrink, it's shrunk a lot, but like our partners are a, a big, a big proponent of that too. So yes, we are meeting with people on our pantry day, but um, also our partners are a big part of the work that we do. So has the demand decreased since the start of the pandemic? I, I wish I could say, <laughs> I could say it has. Um, I think recently, Healthy Waltham was invited to the master planning meeting that the nonprofits, um, some nonprofits were invited to. And I think what hit home for me being there is I, I test, uh, had, I, I made a you know, statement and then watch CDC made a statement right after me. I couldn't have timed it perfectly, but one of the testimonies, um, kind of stuck with me where there was a, I think a Waltham resident who is also a Waltham city employee and she still has two part-time jobs. And in, you know, because of healthy Waltham, she's able to not choose between rent and food. Um, and so that stuck with me and that's continued to stick with me. So no, the demand is not down. Um, it's, um, I think, and I just have to say, just I think the reason the pantry is just so popular, um, or what we'd like to say, I should say market, because that's the more evolved term. The reason the market is so popular is because of the offerings that Healthy Waltham serves. Um, we pride ourselves in sharing, um, working with farms here in the local area, um, providing food in its natural state because we serve such a diverse amount of families, whether it's the Asian population, the, the Latinx population, um, the Haitian population, the man, you know, we, we is not our, our, it's not up to us to tell people, okay, you need to have Buffalo chicken wings. You know what I mean? It's, we, we, we provide dignified, you know, food in a dignified way so you can prepare it the way it, it works for your family. Um, we work with local farms here to provide vegetables, we produce, very produce heavy. Um, and so those are the things that cost a lot of money at the grocery store, uh, produce, meat, uh, dairy. And so having us offer that as opposed to shelf stable items is what has made us like the gold standard here in Waltham and in the area. So are a lot of people coming from other towns for this, or do you think uh, most of the people are from Waltham? I want to set the record straight uh, <laughs> for all the inquiring minds. 97% um, of the residents we serve are from Waltham. Um, and it's, I know it's, a lot, it's really hard for people to believe that, but it is. Uh, we have the data to prove it. Um, we started implementing a registration system um, I would say one and a half years into this, we couldn't do it at the beginning, obviously for safety concerns for our guests and our volunteers and team. Um, but when it was safe to do so, we started to implement that. Um, and that allows us to understand where the demographics are in our community of where the, the need is, um, which surprisingly is not all public housing, um, for those who want to know that, um, it is in different parts of the city. Um, 
like I said, the as we know, all these all of these issues coincide with each other, you know, food relief, affordable housing, workforce development, um, you know, career opportunities, employment is, they're not siloed issues. These are all social service issues. And so it could be your neighbor who is uh, food secure because food, food insecure does not have, like it doesn't say it's not scarlet lettered on your face. Um, so it, it's something that for me personally, it's, it, it, it's, it's, um, it's something that, like I said, I grew up with a big family and we, we lived, you know, we had WIC. Um, so we had, we were on uh, government assistance. So I, I know what it feels firsthand. So it's not, it's something that's a very, it's a personal mission for me. Um, so it, and, and, and I'm sure walking around people and be like, oh my God, she's, you know, she's this or she's that. So that those are the stigmas that, you know, it, it, that we want, we need as a community need to be more humane and understand that these are not like, I, we didn't conjure these people up. <laughs> they were already in the community. Most of them are people we used to serve at the McDevitt pantry. Um, and now the reason that it's just so amplified is for two reasons. One, the McDevitt pantry had a limit unto one who it could serve because it was a school-based pantry. So we prioritized people who were in the school system and were at that school. And two, um, the list was a four-year waiting list. So, so about only 250 to 300 families could be on at that list at, at, at that time. Um, and, you know, and the second thing is the pandemic just amplified the need. So this is, this is a perfect trifecta for where we are right now. So that sort of gets me into our Next question, which is so Healthy Waltham is not part of the government. It's a it's a nonprofit organization, but you have relied on the city um, for space to do your work. Can you walk us through sort of the different kinds of support the, the city has provided and how that's changed over time? Right. So prior to my um, to my employment, uh, the city and Healthy Waltham had you know said different relationship. I can't speak to that. It, it was before my time. Um, but I know, I think they at one point were at South Street, the um, old South uh, school, which I can't think of the name right now, the address. And then we had to move out because the dual language school grew and needed the space. And then we were homeless. We're still homeless. <laughs> so um, we, so that was before my time. Um, and then now fast track to, uh, like I said, when I joined, uh, like I said, we were still homeless. Um, that was one of my agenda items um, of things that I wanted to accomplish um, for the organization. But when the pandemic hit, I called the city and I said, you know how important this pantry is. We cannot put a pause on it. I know the schools are closed. Uh, what else can we do? Because I've called all around the city and tried to speak to places that have big, big parking lots, uh, such as, you know, I'm not going to name them, but there's a lots of, lots of uh, churches and um, other organizations that have huge parking lots were, that were empty and were denied. And so uh, the mayor suggested at the time to go to St. Mary's because she's a parishioner there. Um, and so that's how the relationship started with um, us distributing from St. Mary's. And at the time, the mayor and the city of Walthams uh, provided support for um, trash removal, because at that moment, it's a lot of trash because we do, because we are a mobile pantry, everything comes in and goes out the same day. So that, of course, that produces a lot of pallets and boxes and cardboard and shrink wrap, et cetera. Um, no food waste, which has been, <laughs> which has been another issue uh, that we, I want to address. The food waste has been very, very minimal. It's majority of it's pallets and the cardboard. And so that what is, what is transferred 
or transported to us um, to do the food distribution. And then the police was also to provide traffic control was um, provided by the city. Come to when things started opening up, uh, the St. Mary's has a robust after school program um, with students and uh, students and here and outside of the city that for free. And so they needed the space back and it was dangerous to have a car and um, we just couldn't function in space to have drive up and walk up and children running around in the space. So it was just, it was just not, not safe. And so brought it again uh, to the mayor um, and the city and said, okay, this has to go somewhere or we're gonna have to shut down. And there was many conversations for it to be at first the Fitch, then it wasn't at the Fitch, then it was the government center, which we knew wasn't an ideal situation um, because of where it's situated and uh, the traffic in that area. But at the time, that's what was available and it was next door to St. Mary's. So it made a little bit more sense um, at the time. And so we transferred there. And so the same services were provided. Right now, where we are right now with the city is we are no longer distributing at Government Center. Uh, we have, for the most part, emptied out the um, gymnasium because that's where we left our things that we would use for the pantry. So our tarps, tents, tables, et cetera. Um, so for the most part, we've emptied out the garage, um, that gymnasium and we have always stored dry food at Fitch. Um, and we have a container at the farm that was um, provided to us by the previous tenant, the previous tenant that was there and that was the gleaners. So we took over that um, container because it served us. We were able to now hold um, frozen items. So are you no longer doing pantries or you're still doing, or you're, you're still doing pantries out of government center? No, uh, we had to cease operations at the end of December. Our last pantry was actually December 22nd. Um, and today we were supposed to have a pantry on the 12th. Um, but unfortunately, uh, last Thursday, um, we had, uh, I guess, I'll, I'll, let, me, let, me, let me circle back. So when the end of and the last pantry on the 22nd was announced that that's where we would be. We obviously had been speaking to the mayor on, okay, if, we are, if we're ending, the, ever ending there, we still haven't been uh, successful in finding a private um, space for us to rent. We've been looking for space for about eight months now, eight to months to a year, have not been successful because most people don't want Landlords don't want a food pantry in their building. So we're hitting against that um, for all types of reason, whether it's because they think we're going to infest their space um, with rodents or they just don't want people coming in. They don't want lines. You know, I think everyone has this idea of a market being long bread lines. Um, and that's not what this is. Uh, and that's not what we're trying to do. We're actually trying to involve because most of our partners have evolved since the pandemic in making food pantries and um, into a market-based model where people come in through appointments, it's dignified, you come in, you shop. Um, the space also provides other social services and an office space, because that's what Healthy Waltham is looking for. We're looking for office, um, an office space where we can do meetings and meet um, and strategize um, to a place to distribute and a place for storage. And it's been very difficult to find a space in Waltham proper to be able to do that. And so, you know, with that being said, 
you know, circled back with the city saying kind of we're at where, you know, we've come to an impasse, we haven't found a space. So uh, what, you know, what should we do? Can we use Fitch? It was a lot of back and forth there. And so the agreement was for us to be at Fitch for three months. Um, and the city councilor for that ward had specific specifications that we had to meet, um, which we did. But then come last Thursday, we had new specifications and we just could not turn that around as quickly. We are down a staff member. Uh, so we just couldn't, we couldn't operate. Uh, so that is why we did not have a pantry today. So just to be clear, it stresses me out if I have no food for tomorrow's dinner in the fridge and I don't know when I'm going to the store. So what just happened is between 300 and 600 families in Waltham thought they had a meal coming tomorrow and now they don't. Is that right? Or today, I'm sorry. And now they don't. Yes. I mean, we it's they definitely did not receive what were they used to used used to getting. Um, healthy Waltham usually provides um, and upwards from 50 to 75 pounds of food. And majority of that is produce. Um, and then like a small portion of that is shelf stable. So today, if, you know, we, we tried to do as much communications out to, to our uh, guests, our volunteers that, hey, due to this, we have no pantry. Um, and obviously we anticipated that some people would show up today. So if you did show up, we at least gave, we were able to serve what we had on stock inside, um, inside Fitch, which was mostly shelf stable, all shelf stable. So we, we had to do that. So it, it could have been, I'm assuming a very frantic for our guests, um, very disappointing for our guests, um, yeah. <laughs> can you tell us, um, I, I don't know if you want to go into this much detail, but can you tell us at all what the, the, the conditions you were given that you were unable to meet? Yes. Um, so the building, the Fitch Gymnasium is, oh, I don't know how many square footage it is, but let's just say the capacity fire code is 49 people. And so the con new conditions was that we had to have um, volunteers, staff, all guests and food inside the gymnasium at all times with one exit, one entrance and one exit door. And we weren't setting up, you know, we, 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 we you know, we had these conditions from the ward counselor for weeks. So we were preparing it in a way that, you know, she stated that we weren't allowed to have cars drive up. Okay, fine. Uh, she wanted a dumpster. She had wanted a pest remediation plan weekly. We had to remove our, you know, food um, immediately or trash immediately. And so that's the plan that my team was working on. And then to get a different plan a week later that now you have to have everybody inside plus the food. It was, that's not how they had set it up because it takes a lot of people power resources to configure a space in a way to serve people and reimagine, especially if you're receiving over 17,000 pounds of food. <laughs> so, um, so to do that, it was just not, it was not feasible. And um, it's, it's, un it is unfortunate uh, because to do that as well required us to get, you'd have to get a new health permit, which wouldn't have been feasible, you know, getting the news on a Thursday. And then the next, you know, then you'll really, you have Friday, you know, it's just, it's just not, we don't have that resources to kind of flip it around. The first two times that you had to move, it was because there was another group that needed that space at a specific time. When you had to move out of government center and also you have always had a time limit on the fit right were those based on there's someone else who needs to use that space at a certain time or how did those come oh up? i i believe government center is a myriad of things i can believe that the employees there are frustrated with um you know the use of space by us and the guests um i think 
it, it, you know, it's, it, it, it's for me, for something that's only held twice a month, you know, I'll leave it at that. Um, but for some people, they thought it was an inconvenience. Um, and I would say, I think it, it just was getting too much um, blowback or the, you know, the city was getting too much blowback for having this there, that that's why we had to cease operations there. Um, so we'll, we'll let that, let that stay there. And then for Fitch, um, you know, we always thought when we moved out of St. Mary's that that was a great temporary space for us to work out because it is, for lack of, it's an abandoned building. <laughs> it's an open space. It's not interrupting interrupting operations of any of anything. Um, and you know now since we're not doing drive up, um, and we've been looking and and visiting other pantries to see how they run their pantries, we just saw so many possibilities there. Um, and so when it didn't um, work out well there for us to serve there the conditions was that we could store dry goods there um, because at St. Mary's we were able to store dry goods in the basement and so we could you know we got the permit we were able to do that um, did everything the health department stated that they want us to do but to not operate from there it's just it, it was just a pain so because we can park our cars there so our team has to, you know, again, we're stretched thin. We're, it's only six people. We're all part-time. Um, and so to, you know, get a, drive up to there, pick up our car, go to another place. It's just like, it's a lot of logistics that people don't know. There's a lot of magic behind the scene that our team and volunteers do um, leading up to every pantry. It, it's a lot of work. Um, and so, like I said, I commend the team for kind of like checking through, but you know, it, it could, it could be a little demoralizing if you're working in the pantry, um, to keep moving every couple of months and not have certainty where the next, you know, if you're going to, where, where the next pantry is going to be, or if you're going to have a job. And, um, so it could be, it could be quite frustrating and not only for guests, but uh, for the team as well. Just to help us understand how these get decisions get made about who uses what space, it sounds like the ward counselor had a big influence and was the one who initially gave you conditions for the Fitch. Was she also the one who gave you new conditions a week ago or that was someone else? No, so uh, that, was, that was the mayor. Uh, she had new conditions uh, based on um, based on um, complaints she was getting from um, constituents from that ward. Um, so that is the new, those were the new conditions that we had to, what we had to ab abide by. Um, so it's, like I said, it's, it could just be a little bit frustrating and I just have to be conscientious of um, the team members who are doing the work to kind of, you know, set up a space in a way to serve people um, and then be told a week before the pantry, like, sorry, we have to do it a different way. It's just <laughs> could be quite frustrating for sure. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like a lot of the objections that are being raised have to do with either appearances or convenience for other people. And you're putting that on one side of a scale and on the other side of the scale is people eating. I think it doesn't. Okay doesn't speak well to our whole community maybe that there are, if there are in fact multiple people making complaints about these things I it's yeah I think the balance of the scale is can be unfair um and um I think that like I said in doing this work it's it's really not disruptive we have really been good neighbors wherever we have been any person from Father Nolan at St. Mary's to this, even the city could state that we have been more than um, abiding to whatever they want us to do. 
they, they didn't want cars. Okay, so our team flipped really quickly and changed the system to not do cars. They didn't want guests outside. The team flipped quickly to make sure guests weren't outside when we were at government center. Um, you know, so any, any, every, every goalpost that's, that's given to us, we meet it, but it always feels like there's another goalpost, another goalpost. So it's just, it, yeah. So at, at, at times it could be a bit um, demoralizing. Just to put this in perspective, have you talked to people who run pantries in other cities and towns and how do their issue, how, or specifically the support they get from the city government, how does that compare to Waltham? I would say, I must take Newton as a very good example. Obviously Newton is a city and um, has resources. Probably, you know, people like to say Newton is, you know, Newton has resource because it has a higher tax bracket. But, you know, Waltham has more resources than Newton, quite frankly, uh, because of the business base that we have here. Um, and so they always look at us like, oh my God, Waltham has so much money. Um, Newton was able to work, um, the Newton Food Pantry was able to work with their city. And um, during the pandemic had first containers right in front of city hall. Um, and during that time, um, city hall was able to clear out the whole basement or first floor of their operations to allow their pantry to operate from there. And they, they're still there to this day. Um, and it's run like a well-organized machine. Um, they have appointments <laughs> and people come in and are able to shop and they're out. Similar to uh, the Center Food Pantry, Center um, Street Food Pantry has two containers on the street and they're, and they're operating from a church and they're able to operate. And that's like that partnership that I'm saying that you know, nonprofits who do this work would love to see from their city or their municipalities because one, um, we're shouldering a lot of this burden and it's not a burden that we, it should be, it should be a partnership, plain and simple. Like that we should, we should be, if this is a social service issue um, and it's not a siloed issue, okay, you know, we're providing you you know, trash support and police support. Okay, figure it out. <laughs> um, this is a, is a deeper issue. And this is why I've said that it's very important for our city to have a space where all the nonprofits doing this work, whether it's like our sister organizations like Waltham Partnership for Youth who, who handle um, services with high school graduates, where they have like a work, a pipe, to, you know, a, a school to pipeline, school to work, um, workforce. What do you, what do you call it? School to workforce. That's Donald. <laughs> school to workforce uh, pipeline. Um, and that's benefiting, you know, Waltham residents at the end of the day. Or um, uh, watch CDC that's working on affordable housing. I mean, we're, we're providing services to constituents where if the city is not able to do so, then they should partner, create, you know, have a space, create partnerships where we are in one space where you're like, okay, you need to go to X street and you can go there and you can figure out where you can get food, you can figure out where you can get how information about housing or um, domestic violence or you know, sexual assault, uh, you need, you're unhoused, you need information, like there should be this. And I don't understand why we can't do this. I, I mean, I said in my statement that I said for the master plan, I mean, we have services, models, we have committees for all things in Waltham. There's a veteran services committee. Why can't there be a homeless and <laughs> homelessness and, and hunger uh, service committee? It's really not that hard. And um, I feel like if we put our heads together, we could go farther. I mean, a lot, a lot of people don't know my background, but my background is event planning. And so you go into event planning, it's a project. You have a beginning, a middle and end. You find the problem, 
you work with others to create a solution, you create a solution and you keep on going. I, I just feel like I'm just, I'm a very oriented, project oriented person. And so to keep doing this dance for, for the past couple of years, it's just, like I said, it's, it's weighing on me because I feel like we could do so much better. It sounds like from what you said so far, the prospects are not very good for finding a private site that will allow you to do this. What can people do to help you out at this point? Good question. Um, keep contacting your city councilors and, and the mayor. Uh, let, her, let them know that this is important to you. Um, and um, I would say people who are nonprofits and all of my nonprofit um, collaborators know that, you know, we're always having supporting our back. And even if there's a landlord out there or someone who believes in social services, um, even if it's, hey, we have this, I have this space or I, I know someone and we're not saying give it to us for free if it's a private space. Um, it's not that money is always the issue. It's just, trying to change that perspective of what we're trying to do. These are, these are families, these are people. Um, this is 2023, you know, we, 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 there's different ways. I think we have to get rid of like what things look like, what perception looks like, because I yesterday, or actually not yesterday, earlier this week, my team and I went to go visit Arlington Eats and they're a market-based model. And Truly, there's 2,600 square feet efficiently done. On top of that, guess what's on top of it? Affordable housing. <laughs> um, and it's a beautiful, bright building. It sits in the corner. It's not a lot of parking, but you walk into that space, it feels welcoming. It feels you have, you know, you could shop with dignity. It's a weld oiled machine. They have appointments. They have a field called operation. Um, that can they can field calls. They, this can be done. There's models out there. <laughs> this, we're not reinventing the wheel. There's other sister towns around us who are doing this work. We just have to listen and 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 ask and see how we can implement this. We have the resources here in Waltham to do it, and it can be done. Thank you, um, James or Emily. Do you have any more questions? I have a few. So I've been to a few of your pantries, quite a few at this point, and it always struck me like, like the size of the operation initially, like all the cars, all the police required. But honestly, in hindsight, and hearing you talk about it, it's like the city government kind of is like a someone with a hammer and everything looking like a nail, right? Like if they just gave you space, the permanent space to operate in, you wouldn't need to have all the police around to make sure all the cars can get in there and if it was a permanent space that you're operating in, you could have people scheduled so it wasn't a big crush of people all at once. And it's just sort of fascinating because these people are operating from like their idea of how things are and they have an idea of bread lines and then they create the exact situation for bread lines because they can't envision anything different. And it's really good to hear you talking about all this, especially connecting like the food and rent, like, just like the, amount of the rent has gone up and then like seeing people act as if like there's like they can't believe that people are food insecure at the same time rent is going up five hundred dollars a month what are some of the things you'd like to be working on with healthy waltham right now miriam if you weren't spending oh. all this time <laughs> trying to find a space for the pantry so Emily used to be a board member, so, <laughs> so she knows I have grandiose ideas for Healthy Waltham. Um, if we weren't doing this song and dance, um, one of the things that I am passionate about is provide is social services. Is um, you know a lot of the work that we've done in the past. I always like to say that, especially with the pandemic and the amount of trusted families and guests that we've come to no, um, still are a little bit anonymous to us. And what I would like to do is meet people where they're at. That's already what we do, but there's more behind the story than just giving you a bag of groceries every two weeks. I would love to know 
how could we be of service to you and help you out? Do you know that, you know, SNAP is available to you? Okay, you don't have a computer come into our office. Let's do this together. Because most of the time, sometimes it's like, uh, yeah, 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 it's there, or I didn't know, or I don't think I can qualify. There's so many questions and we don't have a space to kind of do that triage work. Um, I would love to have a space to do that and work with a social worker to come and do that. You know, having a project bread come to our pantry and table is nice, which we've had before, but one paper glitz blows away, it's in your trash, it's in your bag, you may throw away the bag, okay, yeah. Or you could have applied and got denied. You could, you know, there's just so many factors that if we have the space to do that work, that's like number one for me. Second thing for me, another pet project of mine is transportation. And um, I can't focus on that. I sit on so many committees and I cannot even attend the meetings because um, this is obviously priority, but transportation plays a big factor into what I just talked about, affordable housing, workforce development, um, food relief, and our city, is still based on the model of people leaving Waltham to go to Boston to go to work. And the people who work and live in Waltham don't have an interest, intra, an intra transportation system in Waltham. It, Waltham is just so big that it needs that. It used to have it for those who don't know, um, a very efficiently well-run um, intra system, intra a bus system. If you ever want to have a conversation, you need to tap into um, uh, Monica. Uh, I can't remember her name, so you guys may find that. Um, but she is the ED of the 128 Business Council, um, who runs the shuttles for the 128 Business Belt. So she will tell you. She is the transportation guru. Waltham used to have one. And it didn't stop because it was not popular. It stopped because of politics. Uh, so... These are the things that I would love to work on because a healthy Waltham equals a healthy community. It's not, it's an, it's a holistic approach. And to be healthy means like you have your city working for you. There are social services available to you. It means equity shouldn't even be a part of it. It's just everything is available to you and you're not just, um, you know, trying to figure out things on your own. This is what I, I would love to see Healthy Waltham do more of in terms of the work. Thank you so much. Any more questions? Oh, thank you so much. I've been saying, you know, ever since the beginning of the pandemic, it's really been amazing how different volunteer groups and nonprofits have stepped up um to feed and house and vaccinate and really taken the lead on it and i think you're a great example of that i think it's raised a lot of questions about what we expect from our municipal leaders from our elected leaders most people don't think that the government is responsible for feeding people but if you have an organization that wants to feed people and they just need a little help how you know what what is your role there is 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 any amount of inconvenience or expense for neighbors justification for not feeding hundreds of people um so i think it raises a lot to think about um in terms of what we expect from leaders in our community both elected and non-elected leaders so it's great to have you on i wish we could have you on when you had better news <laughs> Um, but uh, please, for everyone who's watching, do what you can to talk to your city councilor about this and also reach out to your network and see if there's another space that Walt the Waltham could possibly use. And thank you very much, Miriam. <laughs>